Rural access to health care remains a challenge in sub-Saharan Africa due to urban bias, social determinants of health, and transportation-related barriers. Health systems in sub-Saharan Africa, countries including Uganda, often lack equity, leaving disproportionately less health center access for the poorest residents with the highest health care needs, a case that is undoubtedly worse in rural areas. There is no country that can develop without uh, a productive workforce. And productivity can only come about when you have a healthy society. The faculty came to life way back in 1989 after extensive modification of physical facilities of the then former school of midwifery at the Mbarara District Hospital. The work started in 1988 when I was by then the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Makerere University. And the President talked to me, let us think about a medical school and I have discussed this issue with my colleague Fidel Castro. The idea came together for President Fidel Castro and President Museveni to start a collaboration with Cuban doctors to address the shortage of human resources in Uganda. Particularly when the new NRM government took over power, they immediately realized there was need for tough workers in the country. So I was off to Cuba and identif identified the, the staff, RM Carlos for physiology, Dr. Azikwe for embryology, Dr. L.A. Lopez for psychology and Dr. C.C. Dyers for biochemistry. The vice chancellor who was leading the team was working around the clock as the university bursa, doubling as university bursa. He was heading the Department of Anatomy at the time. He was teaching the medical students and only 43 students at that time were admitted. This was our only lecture block. This legendary room called the Main Lecture Theatre, abbreviated as the MLT. We had just one small blackboard and every lecturer would come in here and would use chalk. The faculty that started with only one program has today grown to an extraordinary diversity of 23 different master's programs and six undergraduate programs that include human medicine, nursing, medical laboratory sciences, pharmacy, pharmaceutical sciences, and physiotherapy. The first program was medicine and surgery. The Bachelor of Surgery and Bachelor of Medicine uh, was the first uh, program to be established in this university. The MDCHD program uh, started with uh, just 43 uh, students who went on to graduate in 1995. And over the years, this number has more than doubled. We have been able to graduate 4,138 graduates, and of these, 1,734 are graduates of the MDCHB program. These doctors who come from the MDCHB program, they go on to feed into many master's programs, including uh, masters of medicine in the different programs. And under this, uh, the medical school has been able to produce about 300 graduates from the masters of medicine. And this is a great harvest. They also go on to feed into the masters of public health, masters of science in different disciplines. And so their career path is, you know, wide open.
under the medicine and surgery. The program has departments like internal medicine, obstetrics and gynecology, surgery, pediatrics and child health. So the department of surgery is one of the many departments of the faculty. It was started with through around 1989. Um, Currently, the department trains both undergraduates and postgraduates. We have a team of 12 surgeons of different specialties. When we talk about surgery, it is a, a clinical discipline. So there are three important aspects of, of surgery. There is a delivery of clinical services, there is the training of students, and there is also research. Uh, the department has a number of units. Uh, those are six units. There is orthopedics, there is um, uh, pediatric surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, there is neurosurgery, and then urology and general surgery itself. So um, we have surgeons in all those aspects. This department began in 1995 with one resident, that's Dr. Mugera. Uh, now we have, we are proud to be producing, have, having about a total of 35 residents in the three years, that's first year, second year, and third year. This program has really helped in South, not only in Southwestern Uganda, but it, it's countrywide. It is, we do camps, we go and do camps where we treat, we operate on women in different parts of the country. Currently we run a gynecology ward which is initially was a very small ward of about 10 beds. Now we have a, an extension cut us of our collaborations from Medicine for Humanity, from Medland, from the Swiss Foundation. Our main partner is the Ministry of Health. Global Fund also helps us. There is a an organization called CHAI, all these help us. Then there is government to government program. This has been gone a long way to help us do some of the different small, small, small special specialties in the clinics. For example, screening for cancer of cervix, care of mothers with HIV. These people come in and help us a lot. time there's been I'll talk particularly about internal medicine where I work there has been an improvement in the kind of services that we offer right now our students as they are doing their postgraduate training will be exposed to the different areas of medicine we have subspecialty areas where we have um, developed or created units that uh, you know neurology cardiology renal gastro and these areas have also been improving as we go along because they are physician led and now at least every student will be able to look at a ct scan they know what an abnormal and a normal ct scan looks like if they're in the chest clinic for example they will be able to do spirometry and you know know how to interpret it cardiology will expose them to echocardiography and that and then Reno certainly um, all the issues of the management of kidney failure. Pediatrics and child health uh, has been at Mbarra University and Mbarra Hospital for a very long time. Mbarra Hospital started in the early 50s as a district hospital. A big part of the, of the ward itself was built in the, in the 50s. And, uh, but then along the way, the department continued to grow and take on students. Now every year we handle about 100 medical students. Our department is one of the most active departments in research. We have a lot of um, studies going on, including uh, the change to from uh, quinine to atesinate in the treatment of malaria. Every specialty that we've set up uh, is both useful for serving the community training uh, our doctors, both undergraduate and postgraduate, and research. And a lot of publications come out of the department uh, every year. And um, the environment is suitable really for training uh, uh, specialists at a master's level, but also undergraduates. And we are also now looking to uh, PhDs and, uh, and fellowships uh, in, in the 
the gain in the different subspecialties. Next to begin was nursing science. Nursing science was the second program to start in 1999. On average, we admit about 50 students for the direct program and about 40 for the completion program, and they go through a number of courses. Uh, the first years, I usually do preclinical courses, and later on they embark on clinical courses. Uh, in the third year, these students also go for committee placement. Uh, later on, once they complete uh, this degree, we also have a number of master's programs that uh, these students can undertake. Another program is pharmacy. The pharmacy in the Faculty of Medicine has been focusing on doing research on traditional medicine, medicinal plants in Uganda. So we have a big library of books and pan papers on the, our plants, what they do, the efficacy, the safety, and now we are beginning to translate that knowledge into products. So now moved on from just bachelor's degree to master's programs. We have now students from Rwanda, students from Kenya, Tanzania, uh, Nigeria, Benin, Gambia, Malawi. So we have students from almost all over Africa now come to study here at Mbani University. So we do lecturing, but also we promote self-learning. We also have what we call placements, whereby we place our students in the industry, uh, where they go there for three, for three weeks or one month to see the practical application of pharmacy knowledge and theories. Also, pharmaceutical sciences. This program came into being in 2010 uh, after being sponsored by the World Bank grant. And we started recruiting uh, students in the year 2012. So far, for the 10 years, we have trained over 200 pharmaceutical scientists. We mainly teach our students uh, in the lab to do the synthesis, the discovery, and the design of these uh, drugs, most especially from natural products. Medical Laboratory Science. It got started in the year 2000, and at that time we are having only one program, the Bachelor of Medical Lab Science. And uh, we started humbly with uh, just 15 students, and uh, with around four lecturers specialized in the teaching of medical lab science. And uh, we have grown, we have grown because now we have uh, just a number of students, uh, of over 400 undergraduate students, and uh, over 30 postgraduate students in uh, different areas of specialties. And uh, for information, we have attracted a big number of foreign students at both undergraduate and graduate level. And last year, when we had the uh, reunion of international students, our department was thanked for being leader number one in attracting foreign students into our program. So we pride ourselves in providing quality teaching, providing the, the, the best uh, type of mentoring, and, uh, and that's the reason why our department and our programs are loved. And finally, physiotherapy. Physiotherapy program started in 2012, and so far uh, we've had uh, 120 uh, students passing through the program. And the program started with a direct uh, entry program. And now last year, in 2021, we incorporated the completion program. So there are two programs running concurrently within the department. Uh, we've built collaborations with a number of universities, uh, University of Duke, and then University College of Dublin. Our, depart our program is the only program within uh, the country that trains uh, Bachelor of 
science and physiotherapy in a government institution. Guided by competence-based curricula, the Faculty of Medicine attributes her uniqueness to the modes of teaching used. When we receive students from the Admissions uh, Committee of Senate, uh, we teach them uh, in different ways. Uh, we have the uh, theory teaching in classrooms, uh, we have practical teaching in the labs, uh, we have um, uh, community placements uh, uh, in different uh, hospitals, usually small hospitals uh, distributed uh, throughout uh, the whole of southwestern Uganda. Uh, they go to simulation labs in preparation for uh, bedside teaching. So within the simulation labs, they are working with uh, uh, mannequins or robots. And then uh, they go to the, to the hospitals uh, where they are uh, taught uh, on the patient, directly from the patients uh, themselves. And students actually get to participate in the assessment of patients as well as uh, the management uh, process. Uh, for some of the programs, uh, the students go to industries uh, for placements, uh, some go to uh, uh, labs, uh, in, in specialized labs. Then the students have to learn about the practicals, the theory, and the clinical uh, aspects of their programs using our hospital or other hospitals uh, within uh, this southwestern Uganda. The Faculty of Medicine exposes students to hospitals in order to equip students with much needed skills to deal with patients. When you want a doctor to be a doctor, yes, from first year, second year, they are not touching patients, they are working on, in the lab, in anatomy, wherever. But when they begin their clerkship third year, they work with the senior doctors. The staff of the hospital and the staff of the university work together to make sure that those students are actually taught. They are taught how to crack patients, they are taught how to learn medicine, they are taught how to do laboratory investigations and all that. And being a regional referral, we get to meet cases that are probably not very common out there, so it makes us outstanding doctors. First, we have two clinical skills lab, the nursing skills lab and the essential surgical skills lab. We also have one simulation center that has two scenario execution labs. And these are used by all students in the faculty of medicine. Whoever wants to do something that, in, that what we call data procedures. Sometimes we use meat and we want to see them really switch up. They want to do to teach how to pass an engage or how to pass a catheter, they will go to the nursing skills lab. And if they perfect the procedure, then they are allowed to, they then come to the simulation center. So medical simulation is a method of teaching and learning where teachers recreate life, real clinical situations for the purposes of learning in a safe environment. So in the medical simulation center, we design clinical scenarios and we put students in these clinical scenarios and we observe how they actually manage the patients. During the process of managing the patients, we see how they communicate as a team, how they actually do the clinical assessment, the clinical management, including the history taking. And it's from this reflective based learning that we are able to transition them. We have come from the chalkboards to the whiteboards markers. Teaching is ongoing using uh, projectors. We also have a number of online platforms like the learning management system, uh, the Skype calls, video conferencing, Zoom and up to date. We also have a website which was designed. The Faculty of Medicine also has a, a computer lab where we have an IT officer available to assist all students and staff who are willing to use uh, our computer systems. 
at the heart of teaching and learning, the Faculty of Medicine has stood out due to her unique community-based learning. The Faculty of Medicine has had the community-based medical education as a core curriculum component. When you train students, it is very important to train them in areas similar to where they are expected to work. MAST has really, you know, pioneered um, the training of health professionals in the community to generate um, health professionals with the right attitudes to work in the community. And that is on top of the health professionals who are skilled to manage um, patients uh, in the hospital and primary healthcare settings. Under the health facility, the students interface with uh, the health facility staff. They interface with the village health, health teams who are like community guides and they design together with the community change projects. For instance, we went to Nati Valley refugee camp under the guidance of our lecturer, Dr. Chris Nambozi. We were able to serve over 300 people and basically our focus was on NCDs, reproductive health and HIV. So the experience was good. We were able to provide the services to these people. And by the time we left, most of the people were appreciating our services. We were able to health educate them about um, how to prevent the NCDs so as to improve their health. I also help in the health education of the general patients from the community and around the facility. And this research they do uh, sometimes helps us to realize where our, actually, our gaps are. For medical students, there is no place other than mass. The Faculty of Medicine not only supports students to learn academically, but also encourages students to participate in community outreaches. As the president of one association, I've been blessed to organize community outreaches where the faculty has been so supportive. We also do medical camps inside, but mostly outside the university. We also link up the students and the alumni who are outside so as to bring and let them know about the working conditions that are outside the university once they finish the program. Mbari University Association for Physiotherapy Students. It's linking the students here with other students around East Africa, Africa and the whole world at large who are doing physiotherapy. When you are talking at the growth of the student, we are not only talking about academic growth. Holistically, we also want them to enjoy their stay. The spiritual, the spirituality within the university. There are chaplains services across the various denominations. And for the medical school, for the healthcare workers, it's important to appreciate that kind of diversity that we have. It's because of this uniqueness that the faculty has attracted an outstanding cadre of collaborative research and clinical partners. We have received tremendous support in terms of mentorship, in terms of research grants, research training, um, and also clinical uh, skills from our different partners such as the Harvard Medical School, Massachusetts General Hospital, University of Calgary, uh, University of Antwerp, Ghent University, and many others. Medical research in our Faculty of Medicine involves different researches, which can include basic research that encompasses experimental, what we call preclinical research. It can be clinical, but also can be epidemiological research. And research here, we aim, the main aim is to inform action. We intend to gather evidence for those theories and contribute knowledge in health and medicine. And our research basically focuses on challenges that are 
that are actually to be addressed by researchers in the communities and societies. That's what we do and a lot has been achieved. The program of medicine in collaboration with the Doctors Without Borders, the Medicine Frontier, uh, established the epicenter. Epicenter is uh, collaborates in all this work. It collaborates here in Uganda with Marine University of Science and Technology and they offered us land to sit on our building where we operate from and it's strategic because then we are close with the hospital. The faculty impact is exhibited in community transformation, product development, and quality of health professionals. Mitex is one of the products that was approved by National Drug Authority, and this was uh, uh, done by one of our students. And that is what we do. And this year we launched a pharmacy cough syrup. It's called the Farm Cough. This product is developed by the pharmacy student, and we thank the faculty for the supportive means they've given us for this project to work out. We're able to come up with uh, the celebrated drug today, the magic bullet, Covidex. Uh, and um, that was really um, a big achievement. Areas such as the current Rubidiz district, Rugazi Heres Center 4 was that time a very small dispensary. Today it is uh, almost at the level of a district hospital. When we set foot at Brizbrera Health Center 4, it was almost non-functional. By 2000, there was little happening. Today, there is a, it's a vibrant health facility and it's also poised to become a district hospital from Barara. Uh, when we set foot in uh, areas such as uh, Bugindi Community Hospital, uh, they were struggling with how to reach the underserved communities. The family planning information and services was not ready available to those who most needed it. And now all that has been turned upside down. The Faculty of Medicine has produced very notable Ugandans, both locally and in the diaspora. Current Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atwini, and the former uh, Permanent Secretary, Dr. Asman Mukwago, are uh, all uh, alumni of uh, Barra University of Science and Technology. Barra University of Science and Technology Faculty of Medicine prepared me with the right knowledge, skills, and attitudes to be a pioneer emergency physician in Uganda and also in Africa. And that is why today I'm a technical advisor for the Department of Emergency Medical Services at the Ministry of Health. And that is why I'm also a pioneer um, and founder of the Emergency Care Society of Uganda and also the current president of the African Federation for Emergency Medicine. I was privileged to be a pioneer student for the Must M Med ENT program. And currently, I serve not only as senior lecturer, but also as head of department of ENT surgery. We graduates of MAST um, uh, really have a legacy, and that legacy is that of discipline, uh, hard work, and uh, an ethical um, uh, uh, work attitude. And with all this for a foundation, the faculty looks forward to achieving yet more and more in the future. So we want to put up a system whereby the university and the, and, and, and the industry and government work together. So we have a model that we are developing. We have the university, we have industry, we have community, and then government in the middle. The university generates scientific knowledge and innovations to give the industry. The industry generates money from selling those products and supports the university to do more research and produce more products. One of the things that we would have loved to have in future is to have our graduates registered under a professional body, like the Pharmaceutical Society of Uganda. We have Allied Health Professional Council in research organizations discovering, synthesizing, modifying drugs. This lab, the Mass Clinical Research Lab, is in the process of uh, obtaining international collaboration, I mean international accreditation. Uh, we have begun the process in earnest and hope maybe before the end of this year we should have had some of the testing that is in the lab uh, accredited.
if we want quick diagnostics, we need to look at uh, genomics. We need to look at PCR. The genomics translational laboratory that has been established with a generous grant from the NIH. We have hope and are grateful to the government of Uganda through the Science, Technology and Innovations uh, Secretariat. We are buying equipment to beef up what we have in here so that we are able to do not just only the PCR, but are able to do sequencing. Uh, those equipments will help us to do gene sequencing so that we are able to discover organisms to also use them as we are developing kits under that uh, pathogen epidemiological uh, studies project. We are going to discover uh, organisms from the soil and we are also going to design diagnostics and the focus of our diagnostics is basically going to be uh, towards uh, molecular diagnostics. We currently are doing, uh, writing down the curriculum for the master's program so that we are able to absorb a large number of our students that have uh, graduated with the bachelor's but also mm -hmm. having some bit of specialization within the physiotherapy field. We really need a bigger simulation center. Our optimum size of a simulation center right now is four scenario execution rooms and four debriefing spaces. We plan to be one-stop center for surgeries or surgical services in Western Uganda. We hope to see that uh, you know, in the near future that all the academic positions in the faculty of medicine has been filled. So we hope for staff, recruitment, and promotions in the faculty of medicine. Our overarching plan is to grow into uh, a college of health sciences complete with uh, different schools. And come what may, Succeed, we must. Should you choose must as your university, we guarantee you success. Succeed, we must.